A market map is used in business to identify the competition within a specific market, analyse the products or services which they offer to customers, and identify any gaps in the market. By completing the market mapping process, it provides entrepreneurs and businesses with a wide range of benefits. For example, an entrepreneur would be able to make a more informed decision about where to position a potential startup, helping them to avoid oversaturated areas of the market where there is intense competition and take advantage of any gaps in the market where there is little competition. Alternatively, it allows existing businesses to consider where they could potentially reposition their brand or expand their product portfolio. When completing the market mapping process, the businesses within the market are analysed against two selected attributes, with price and quality being two of the most popular attributes which are commonly used to analyse the competition. However, a business can choose from a wide range of attributes depending on what it considers to be important for their target market. For example, they could analyse the market based on the longevity of the products or services, how luxurious the brands are perceived to be, the health benefits they provide, the quality of the customer service offered, the demographics of the target market, the simplicity of the product or service, and how technologically advanced a product or service is. So now we're starting to develop an understanding of why businesses map the market and the attributes which are commonly used. Let's take a look at a simple example of the market mapping process for the car industry. Using the attributes of price and quality with just five of the major brands currently in the market. On your screen now, you can see a market map. It's a two dimensional model with one vertical axis going from the bottom of your screen to the top, representing the quality ranging from low to high. And you will also see a second axis, which is horizontal going from the left hand side of your screen to the right, representing the price a customer is charged. If a business ever wanted to analyse a market against a different set of attributes, they can just change them. It's that simple. So first up, let's start at the lower end of the market with Renault and Vauxhall, who both offer their customers affordable cars with a lower price tag. But as a result, the quality isn't as high as some of the more premium brands in the market. Moving up in the car market, we now look at Audi, who is seen as a more luxurious car brand in comparison to Renault and Vauxhall offering customers a good level of quality and as a result, the price of their cars is higher. Towards the more premium end of the market is a fairly new player in Tesla, who is starting to revolutionise the car industry with their electronic vehicles and advanced technology. And finally, we're going to add Ferrari to this market map. Not the type of car that the average customer purchases, it's certainly seen as a luxurious car which offers some of the highest levels of quality meaning the customers who can afford it are willing to pay a very high price. Now, imagine if the car industry only consisted of these five different car brands and you had just completed the market mapping process. What have you been able to identify as a result? You've most likely been able to identify that there are clear gaps in the market for cars which offer high quality at a low price, as well as low quality and a high price, as there are no competitors currently mapped into these areas of the market map. However, to produce and sell high quality cars at a low price might not be a profitable or sustainable business model, while selling low quality cars for a high price is likely to result in very low customer demand. Other than that, there isn't really an overcrowded section in the market as it stands, with just 5 car brands in play, which is good news for a business looking to enter the market at this point, as they have lots of options open to them. If however, we now added just 5 more car brands to the market map, you can start to see more clearly where the opportunities lie. The mid to low end of the market is now oversaturated by intense competition. Therefore, based on this evidence, it would be a better business decision to produce and sell cars with high quality at a mid to high price range to increase their chances of success. If this market map was completed in full for the car industry, it's likely that every position on the map, which could be considered as a viable option, would be overcrowded as it is a highly competitive industry with many businesses that have been in operation for many years, which shows just how well Tesla have done to break through in recent years. Now we've looked at the reasons for using market mapping in business and seen a simple example in action, it's important to be aware of its limitations. Firstly, a gap in the market doesn't indicate demand for a new product or service, meaning that the market mapping process usually relies on supporting market research 
to confirm assumptions and assess demand before the business invests in the production of a product or service to fill this gap. In addition to this, the competition in the market is only analysed against two attributes. This can lead to conclusions being drawn that aren't accurate or representative of the market. In fact, it could be argued that the market mapping process is oversimplistic. Crucially, market mapping is often based on opinion rather than fact, with many entrepreneurs and businesses completing the process subjectively without supporting statistics and data, meaning it's crucial that the person completing the market mapping process has good levels of insight, understanding and experience in the market which has been analysed for it to be accurate and reliable to help with business decision making. For example, you might not agree with how I've completed the market map for the car industry, and if a market map is completed with poor accuracy, based purely on opinion rather than being backed up with data and statistics, this can lead to poor decision making and the business investing into a product or service to fill a supposed gap in the market where there is no demand from customers. So that's it, a quick introduction to the market mapping process. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to smash the like button and remember to subscribe to Two Teachers YouTube channel if you aren't already to see lots more business videos just like this.